Today is Friday, March 3rd, 2017, and today I bring you this story about a man named Juan Thompson. Now, he's a 31-year-old male who has been arrested by the FBI in relation to the bomb threats that have been made against Jewish community centers and or Jewish schools within the past few days and few weeks. Now, to give you a little bit more background before we get into the video, there's been a lot of attacks over the past few days and few weeks at Jewish cemeteries, vandalizing and bomb threats that have been made randomly in different Jewish community centers and Jewish schools all over the country. And right when I heard that that was going on, I instantly knew that it was probably a hoax. It was not what the average person would think. The average person would think due to their prior conditioning, due to maybe even the historical understanding, they would think that it's been like a, a neo-Nazi or a white supremacist. But I know that that's too obvious. You know, that's too obvious. So I already knew that there was something else going on. And as you could tell from the recent arrest, something obviously is going on. But before we get into who that person is exactly and a little bit more about them, what I want to do right now is show you this video clip that comes from CBS News. Now, this video clip did a pretty good job of explaining what the situation is, but they did not tell you everything. So after we get done with the video, we'll come back, we'll discuss the video, and then I'll give you the final few pieces that you need to put the puzzle together. So without further ado, go ahead and roll it. We've learned an arrest has been made in a series of bomb threats targeting Jewish centers. A suspect has been captured and charged in St. Louis, Missouri. He's believed to be linked to several threats made against these Jewish schools and facilities. CBS News Justice reporter Paula Reed is in Washington. So Paula, what is the latest? Well, Vlad, you couldn't make this up if you tried. 31-year-old Juan Thompson has been arrested and charged with making at least eight of the threats against Jewish centers across the country, but he was doing it in the course of stalking a former romantic partner. Here's how it worked. For six months, he had been stalking a former romantic interest, sending her threatening emails, sending letters to his employ her employer, and then more recently, in the past two months, he decided to shift his cyber stalking, allegedly, to making threats against Jewish community centers. It's not clear whether or not he saw other people doing this or whether he came up with it on his own. But Vlad, he had two different types of threats. He made threats in her name, so he would call in a bomb threat and then send in a tip saying she was the one who, who had called in the threat. Then he also made threats in his own name, but then called in tips saying she was framing him. And he even created a Twitter account to bolster his story. Okay, so you see that, you see what's going on. Now, what was missing from that? <laughs> what was missing? Now, they, they said his name, they said what he was arrested for, but a couple things that I didn't hear and or see, well, actually uh, two or three things. Now, let's jump to the elephant in the room, first of all, that was mentioned that he was stalking this woman. That was the whole, you know, reasoning behind it. It wasn't even trying to make anybody else look bad except for her. And the dude, maybe he's not really that smart, maybe kind of low IQ because he uses his own name sometimes. Sometimes he uses hers and then try to come up with this elaborate story and leaving breadcrumbs on Twitter and stuff like that, which I placed on the screen before you. One of them is right here, <laughs> but it's just really silly. Why would you do something like that? You think you're more intelligent than the FBI who have all the resources in the planet to come and find you? It's really kind of silly to think that way, but I digress. So that is the first thing about the stalking, which lasted from six months to a year, cyber stalking, and then going through this whole elaborate rules to make her look bad. Now, what they did not show in this was the man's picture. And I placed that on the screen before you. Ta-da! <laughs> Obviously, like I said in the title of this video, this is a black man and the woman was white, of course. And I already knew that from the beginning. I knew that from the beginning. I already knew what it was. I knew that it was not a white person. And I saw some of the comments on this video that I played for you talking about white supremacists. But come on, how many white supremacists do you know named Juan? <laughs> Either he's a guy from Mexico or he's somebody else. And obviously he was somebody else, a black man, 31 year old who had been fired before from The Intercept, which is like a news organization online, if I'm not mistaken. And I've also heard that he got fired from NPR. Now, I'm not quite sure if the NPR story is true or false, but I'll place the source that I found about the intercept in the box below, along with everything else I'm talking about in this video. I'll put that in the description box, but moving right along from that, I already knew what this was from the beginning. Right when it came with the news, I was like, yep, I know the hoax. Just like the situation that happened in Mississippi, where you had the black church that got burned up and then somebody wrote vote Trump on it. That didn't make any sense. It's just like, okay, 
why would you burn a church up and then put a positive message on the outside? You see, because the bombing that happened, the like the uh, the firebombing that happened in North Carolina at the GOP office, that made sense for it to be an anti-Trump attack because number one, it was at a GOP headquarters where you had uh, like campaign signs and stuff, a local kind of like a regional headquarters, just people to go out there and volunteer and stuff. And then a short distance away, you had anti-Trump graffiti on the wall. And it was negative. It was not anything positive talking about vote for Hillary. It was like, get out, Nazi Republicans, etc. It was not anything positive. See, if you throw a Molotov cocktail into somebody's establishment, place a business, residence, house or whatever, you're not going to put something nice on the outside. Vote Hillary. That's not how that works. And the same thing with these bomb threats is like, why would anybody do that? It's not something that makes a whole lot of sense. If it was somebody that's like a white supremacist, I think that you would know and you wouldn't be kind of in the dark about it. So right when I heard what was going on and how it was unfolding, I knew it was a hoax. And here we are today. But this ain't nothing new. Like I said, you had a black man that was bombing the church in Mississippi, trying to frame it on somebody else, trying to make it be a Trump attack. When it wasn't, he wrote vote Trump on the side. And that's something he did probably after the church had already been burned up and they arrested him. There's been a lot of stories like that, especially in black areas where you try to frame somebody else, maybe to get some money or something like that. I'm not really sure what it is, but in this case, the dude was just crazy stalking his ex girl. But my message to him and anybody else going through that, just move on. <laughs> just move on, man. I mean, it ain't really worth it. And what's funny about that is that the woman was white. So not only do you have a person who is not a white supremacist, you got somebody that is infatuated with his white ex girlfriend. So maybe he is a white supremacist. Maybe he likes white people so much that he just wants to be like a, a champion for the, the the extreme far right and left that hate Jews. Maybe that's what he wanted to do. I don't really know, but that's kind of what it's feeling like. It's almost like a, a Sean King type of thing where you're trying to be virtue signaling for the black community to the point where now you hating on white people, even as a white man, it's like the extreme far left, right? Like the, like the, the, the black radicals way over there on the left, you empathize with them so much. You want to become them. It's really a mental illness. And I hope this dude here, man, after he gets locked up and go to jail and whatever you got to do, just serve a sentence and get some treatment, get some mental help because this right here ain't normal. This is not a normal thing to be engaged in. And that's pretty much all it is to it. Like I said, I knew what it was from the beginning. It was not a surprise to me. How about you? When you heard the news about the Jewish community centers and the Jewish schools being attacked as far as uh, any bomb threats and the Jewish cemeteries being desecrated, what did you think? Did you think it was a white supremacist? Did you think it was a hoax? Were you not really sure? Were you kind of on the fence? And also, what do you think now? What is your reaction? Are you just surprised beyond belief? Are you just shocked? Are you you're clutching your pearls? Or are you just like, uh, that's typical. I expected that. What's your reaction? Whatever your comments are. Let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.